So far we have looked at how to repair the occlusal cavity for the tooth and we've also looked at how to isolate the tooth effectively with rubber dam. We are now going to place the composite. The exact techniques used for placing composite will depend on the composite that you're using and the bonding system. For this reason we will not include any of the timings that we would use for the system that we're using. It is imperative that prior to using any restorative material you are well versed in its use its handling properties and the specifics for its placement. Etch the tooth for the recommended time. Following this, thoroughly wash away the etch, ensuring that you use high volume suction whilst you're doing this. Dry the tooth following this, but take care not to desiccate the dentine. Once you have done this, it is time to bond the tooth. To apply the bond, follow the instructions as per your bonding system. This may be one that requires a primer or the prime and bond may be together. Gently air thin the bond. And then light cure for the recommended time. When restoring the cavity with a composite material, it is important that we incrementally fill the cavity with composite and that we light cure the composite after each increment is placed. Once you have filled the bulk of the cavity, it is important to be mindful of the anatomy of the tooth. When placing the final increments on the tooth, be mindful of what the functional and aesthetic anatomy of the tooth will be. Incorporating these into the final fills of the composite will minimize how much adjustments you need to do to the tooth once it has been finished. For these reasons, it is imperative that we know our dental anatomy well. Following our final increment, we should assess our restoration, ensure that there are no voids in it, probe the edges of the restoration to ensure that there are no obvious defects and adjust it with composite finishing burrs as necessary. It is now time to remove the rubber dam. Following this, we should floss our contact points to ensure that no bond or composite have become lodged there. And then we must check the occlusion with articulating paper to ensure that there are no high spots. It is also important to ask the patient whether or not they can feel their occlusion to be different than it was prior to the procedure. The patient must also be consulted on the final appearance of the tooth. If there are final adjustments to be made, make them at this stage and then polish the tooth to ensure that it is smooth. We have now completed restoration of this tooth.